Hello, everyone. This is Daryl once again, and uh, I'm back with another one of the uh, interview shows that uh, we've been doing. Um, this time, we are going to be talking to Maz of Triple Takeover, that uh, that new podcast. I guess it's not very new. It's been on for over a year now, but uh, they've been killing it. So we're going to talk to Maz in a second, and uh, and we're going to talk to him about uh, doing the podcast and what uh, you know what that's been like. And we're going to talk to him about a couple other things because. Uh, I realized while listening to their show and, and, you know, and getting to kind of know Maz like you do over social media and stuff like that, that uh, I thought, you know, I think I got a lot in common with this guy. So uh, I wanted to sit down with um, with Maz, as you do virtually, and and, and really, uh, you know, kind of talk to him about, uh, you know, what, uh, what what he's into and, and that kind of stuff. So so it, I hope you like it. It's a, it's a fun chat. And I, I really uh, I really think we uh, we covered a lot of ground. So. Uh, without uh, without belaboring the point much uh, here, let's uh, let's get into the discussion with Maz. I see you're still uh, you're still getting settled behind you there. Quite the opposite. I'm packing down. Uh, oh really? Okay. Everything I've had is gone into storage uh, until we get some work done in all the rooms. Hopefully, just for a few weeks. Uh, but it's been a process. It's like moving house without the payoff at the end. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's wild. See, because I thought. Um... Cause I, I reached out to, uh, to, to Liam, cause I listened to your show and Liam Thank just you. ignored me. <laughs> and so oh, I'm like, okay, well, all right. And I'm like, so listening to the show, I knew that, uh, that six O was moving and I'm like, I'm not going to mm. bother six O with during his move. Cause that's just a, a pain, especially as a, as a collector myself, I'm like, don't talk to me until the move is done. Right. And, uh, and I'm like, well, I know Maz is he's he moved a while ago. And, uh, and, and I didn't know you were having these, some renos done. So, yeah. So I'm sorry for bothering you during renos. No, no, no. It, it's fine. Uh, Liam will get back to you. You're just getting a very Liam kind of time scale, but <laughs> cause, cause he showed me the message you've sent him. Um, oh, okay. I think he got his first. So he, I think he's fully intending to get back to you. <laughs> okay. Not to okay. Worry. Um, yeah, no, I, uh, I was like, you know what? I, I, I realized that there were, uh, there were football playoffs. I think it is something like that was on yeah. and uh, I'm like, okay, well, there's, there's NHL it... playoffs are on right now yeah. too, but my team got eliminated. So I was like, ah, well, I might as well podcast. Oh, I'm sorry <laughs> about that. Well, Liam supports like a local provincial team. And I think they won some prize <laughs> locally or something. Nothing big. Don't worry about it. <laughs> That's, 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 I'm, I'm so happy for him to have, to have a local team that does well. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it does well locally <laughs> <laughs> oh that's fantastic um i'm gonna I, i'll have to make sure that uh, if i do get a chance to talk to him that uh, i just I, I bug him about that kind of stuff um, oh you won't get him to stop that'll be it that'll be the oh, entire shit. content okay. of your show that's it you know you're locked in there <laughs> damn um all right right oh, so uh i want to talk about triple takeover or uh yeah, so because you guys have have you guys hit the ground running, and uh, but uh, I want to save that because that's uh, you know I, I'm I'm really keen to get on in on that, um, but awesome. uh, but you and I we 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 kind of we've never physically crossed paths, but we we've interacted before online because um, first off I bought a figure from you a long time ago. Hey, was, what did you get? Um, <laughs> uh now now i gotta remember the name it was it was a uh it was a euro g1 um shoot was it boss the, yes it was boss yeah it was yeah, boss. yeah. Had a really that's nice right thing. It was boss that's right yes and i bought right. bisque from you that's right yes <laughs> yes and uh yeah because i had uh um i had them in sealed in, uh, on card and i was like you know what i'm just gonna look at them might as well send them off to maz so I um very much yeah. appreciate it. he's still sealed actually for the time it's being. fantastic keep him like that yeah he's nah. he's so he's so nice yeah. i love him he's the lobster car he's awesome um, he is awesome um but uh so we've we've communicated quite a bit you know over the over the years and 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 uh yeah so i'm i'm super happy that you guys have started this this show and it, it's doing quite well but uh i i'm eager to talk to you about some other things because I think you and I have a lot more in common than just transformers because you're a massive car guy and I, I love cars. Yeah. I couldn't tell you what any of the specifics or technical specifications mean. And I have the most embarrassing car, which is in the most embarrassing state of disrepair. 
but I do love cars. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. As long as as long as you have an affinity for cars, I can mm. respect that. I am not a gearhead. I could not uh, open up the 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 hood of my car, the 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 bonnet, you know, or and, and and just you know tinker with it to make it go faster. But I love looking at exotic cars, and I love mm. kind of you know I love going to like you know looking at doing races. You've done, um, uh, I think. We we talked about. It. I thought it was Forza, but you got you weren't doing Forza. It was a, a virtual racing league, right? I did uh, Gran Turismo GT Academy a few times. Oh, right on, right on. I, okay, I competed myself. I was in the UK top twenty one year. Wow! And then I started um, working for the guys who were doing GT Academy. So then I started working for the. It was called Jardine International. They run by wow. Tony Jardine, who was the you know F one guy for a while. Wow. So that was a load of fun. So I got in with with Sony and uh, PDI and Jardine that way. So I did a few Gran Turismo shows in the UK. Uh, that that was my only uh, games work experience for a while. I was a teacher for fourteen years. So it was all wow. the stuff I was doing on the side, like the game stuff and the toy writing, that got me where I am now. Well, that's so, yeah. where I was going to go with it. Is because Gran Turismo is my jam. I that's because um, I've bought entire systems just to be able to play gran turismo That's and i'm people do yeah yeah i'm sitting on the ps5 i haven't been able to get one because no one can find these damn things um mm. and uh and i just mine's I still want... sealed i think i'm applying <laughs> the wrong thing to the wrong hobby it's oh my goodness this box, yeah. um so yeah i'm still waiting to be able to get a, a, a ps5 so i can play uh you know gran turismo 7 oh, but... i gotta show you something now that you brought that up oh my goodness yeah if you can see my fanatech setup over there oh that's awesome that's amazing. It was for um, Project Cast 2, it was what I've spent the most time playing in the last few years. I did some esports as well. It's brilliant fun. A terrific wow. hobby. Wow. There's a, um, when I was in college, uh, it's going back a ways, there was a NASCAR game that was, um, it was uh, made by Papyrus. And cool. uh, it, it was uh, NASCAR Racing 2003 or something like that. And it was an online racing league. I couldn't care less about the actual like game itself, but there was an online multiplayer where you could go online and you could race against 43 other guys, you know, in 2003. Yeah. Right. Wow. Okay. It was, it was amazing. That's right? six years before uh, GT5 Prologue. Yeah. It was, oh, it was wow. unbelievably fun. And you had to, you had to download like, people were modding it out so you could actually make like you could talk to the people there was a program you could install on your computer called ventrilo where you could you could now now talk to the other people in the in the game and you could hear what's going on in in, in front of you and stuff and it was just the craziest fun i missed so much school by play, playing <laughs> playing oh, the stupid it's game all consuming it's so immersive it and all consuming yeah so do you like have you been to any car shows or anything like that? How did you get just immersed in in cars? Like, how did you fall in love with with you know exotics and high ends and and you know just kind of fast cars? I think it's probably influenced by my older brother. Uh, he was eleven years older than me, and he was into cars. He was watching Formula One, so I started watching Formula One in the late eighties, very early nineties. Uh, he had loads of car toys, and so did my oh, cousins. Yeah. So then they sort of filtered down to me, and I, I got interested in car toys. I, re I remembered like with Transformers, I was at Toys R Us the first time we went. Um, and those two went to the Transformers. I was messing around with the Teddy Ruxpin dolls. My mom said to me, wait, your brother's found the Transformers already. Uh, and that was what, like 90% cars was all sure. I saw and some jets. So it, it's just always been car based toys that I loved. Awesome. Yeah. See, I was, uh, my first, be I mean, I collected Transformers, but then after Transformers kind of went away from me, I kind of got into kind of model building. Mm, nice. And then when I just got you lazy, yourself as well. Oh yeah, right. Nice. And then when I got lazy, uh, I just decided, you know what, I'm just going to buy the diecast. Yeah, 118 scale, right? Yeah. So the 118 scale, and I've got loads of these things still. I've, they're packed away in the basement in boxes that are. I don't even open because I know they're all there. And I've got. Well, some did you buy? Did you buy like uh, road cars, or would you buy racing cars? I would buy uh, exotic road cars. So mm -hmm. I've got the like. I, my mother actually she she brought one, bought one, brought one for me back from Italy one year, and it's a Bugatti Veyron. Lovely. And, and it's a uh, it's a handmade die cast. 
it's numbered and everything. And she's like, this thing cost me 200 bucks. You better enjoy it. Imagine, yeah. And I'm wow. like, oh my God. So yeah, it's the one of the ones that I actually keep out on display and it's with my, my transformer display back here. So you're going to have to real... send me a photo of that when you're, uh, I will. You yeah. I'll, I'll love I'll, to see uh, that. It's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful model. And uh, yeah, so the rest of them are all these, uh, these generic ones that you'd find at the supermarket mm. and stuff like that. But I just, I love them. You know, they were, they were really great looking models and I, yeah. I really enjoyed having them around. It's a cool hobby. Uh, I went to the Silverstone BRDC Club building once. They, that was where the final part of the event was for Gran Turismo Academy. And what you don't realize is that inside the BRDC, they have almost every single F1 car and racing BTCC race car model and Le Mans car ever made in 134 scale. Just this one display runs all the way around this entire BRDC building. And it's just fantastic. Every wow. single Le Mans car you've ever seen. And wow. wow. It's amazing that they set that up. That's I unbelievable. My favorite 118 is I have um, a champ car signed by Sebastian Bourdais, his McDonald's champ car. Uh, they were offering like a few signed ones back in the, you know, Bourdais heyday with Newman Haas. And, and that one is pride of place. I love it. Wow. It's it's some of those things that yeah we've we collect transformers and we collect mm. other things but there's there's these little bits and pieces that you're like that's staying that's always going to be there yeah. and it's never you know that that's a nice piece of a collection that just you know it's like a one of one that just kind of sits in your collection mm. and I love that it's like the Bugatti Veyron for me it's like it's I'll get rid of all the other ones eventually yeah. but that things that'll stay um, I also your have, mom got it for you you know. It's right. Yeah. Yeah. She, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She, yeah. yeah she, it's, it, it, it's beautiful. It, it really is a really nice one. Um, but, uh, I have, I have two of mine. One of them, I, I love the 89 Batmobile and I have yeah. like a one eighteenth scale, uh, Lovely. from Hot Wheels of the 89 Batmobile and it's absolutely gorgeous. And I love it's it. modern or, or is it a vintage release? Uh, well, I mean, I've had it for probably 15 years, but you know it's it's probably new at that point mm. so it's not from 89 but it's you know it's it's quite nice and uh and then the um the other one i have is not a great model but i've only ever seen it done like this once it's a uh it's a 69 pontiac gto and okay. it's it's my my father had this car and um and it's <laughs> only and it's the only it's the only model i've ever seen in this paint scheme that he had and okay. uh so i was like it's not a great model it's not built well but it's done in this particular paint scheme that i, I was like you know what i gotta get this one so i i, I have that that's the thing with the die cast and, and models like this if you if a, if a really obscure company like from a it's not a big like us or uk or italian german manufacturer does yeah. the model of the car you want you've got to go and buy it whatever quality it is just to have a representation of that yeah. particular color scheme exactly yeah and there it's it's such an interesting hobby because you could spend, you know, thousands on, on, yeah, on a yeah, really nice looking model or 20 bucks. <laughs> you know what auto what is like, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I used um, to have um, all three of the Toyota GT1s from Le Mans in uh, the red and white Marlboro colors, I think it was, from auto art. That was a heck of a display. Wow. This, they, they do. They look so nice, especially when you get some really nice racing car uh, ones. Yeah. They just, they look really nice together. Um, now, I wanted to talk to you a bit about uh being in iceland you know yeah. uh, you, huh. you've mentioned it you've mentioned it quite a few times on on your show but uh um you know a lot of people don't know what it's like to to live in iceland obviously you, <laughs> you've, you've you've moved there you know um you know a, a lot of people may have heard you know the 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 thing about Iceland is it's not ice it's more green and and Greenland's more ice and not green right. um right the confusion there but you know I assume you moved for work which yes generally people do mm. um I can't imagine you moved to Iceland for just fun <laughs> well, it's, you know um it's funny connecting with certain people in the fandom who have actually spent time living here I just met someone in the Diaclone community who spent some time living here and they have really fond memories. My wife is Icelandic as well. So, oh, no way. All right, yeah, cool. We met in the US and then um, for a long time, we just did long distance. And then she moved to the UK and lived, lived with me there for, I think it was eight, nine years. That's where our daughter was born. And then I always thought she would get a job here first. And then I would have to maybe like tend a bar or <laughs> work somewhere like that while I found something English speaking here. But it was actually, I got a job with 
one of the best English speaking companies here. It's a, it's a games company. And wow. uh, we moved over and she got a job here and it's a wonderful place to raise kids because that's the best thing it has going for it. It's so, also gender equality is so much better here than many places in the world. Like you, I have a daughter and you just think she could be whatever she wants here. If she wants to be prime minister, she can be prime minister. If she wants to work in science or genetics or be a musician, it's all available to her here. And a lot of the executives in my company are women as well. So it's, it's a great place for her to have a real opportunity to be what she wants. And during the pandemic, I, there were parts of the pandemic, especially the early, early months where I don't think there was anywhere else in the world I would rather have been than here. That's so fantastic. It, a lot of benefits. I think also like thermo, um, geothermal energy, super cheap. Everything that's, is heated yeah. all the time because it's that's, affordable. That's the one thing that I was going to ask about is you've got geothermal energy. Mm. Um, I've, I remember hearing something, um, is it? Maybe I'm thinking of another uh, of another country, maybe in, in uh, Nordic Europe, but um, is something about dogs? You're not allowed to have dogs in Iceland. Uh, um, there are loads of dogs. Okay, so I'm I'm, I'm I'm getting things confused. It's there is must I I think there's a a country that you can't have pets because of the groundwater or something like that. Um, huh. It's all supplied by I don't know. I'm talking out my ass here because I, I I don't really have all the facts, but um, that's 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 really cool about the geothermal because well yeah. your your whole uh, country is you know mostly uh, you know volcanic uh, right so you got a lot of volcanoes. Yeah, yeah we had an active one recently. Uh, loads of earthquakes. I mean, we were in the third floor of the new build office, big office building, and uh, we were just just shaking the entire time. And uh, it's really disconcerting. It's like your monitors start rattling, the whole building shakes. You can sort of, if you were looking out the window at the right time, you'd see the wave coming in through the ground. Uh, and that was wow. all leading up to the to the eruption last year. Yeah. Uh, but actually it was about exactly a year ago where that was going on. Uh, it's just the problem here is that it's winter, like six months of the year. It's just <laughs> once you get to September and then it's just snow, rain, cold, dark, misery, all the way through till the end of May. And then you start, you, maybe you'll get a summer. There is no in between. It's just like winter than the other thing for maybe six months, then six months of winter. If you can get on board with that, then, um, then you can survive here. And then summer, which is, you know, just around the corner, it's, it's really light outside at the moment. It's 8 PM, but at 11 PM, it will still be this light. And I love it. You can just, it's 11 o'clock at night. Feel like going for a walk. It's brightly lit. It's wonderful. It's uh, it's the best thing about living here, I think. Wow, that's that's fantastic. Um, it's an interesting country, and I'd I'd I'm I'd love to visit it someday. Everyone um, should visit. It's m magical, honestly. For for tourists, it's just magical. The um, uh, there was, <laughs> I mean, the only thing that I can think of that I think, well, I mean, there's a there's a show on right now that my wife and I are watching that was shot some somewhat there. It's uh, the second season of Flight Attendant. They shot a little bit of it there, and um, and then the, uh, the 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 Will Ferrell movie Weirl Vision shot a bunch of it there. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's right. yeah. Uh, so there's uh, there are some outdoor uh, shots uh, that I can think of that that do showcase yeah. some of the uh, the the mountainous area of it. Game in, of Thrones. In, they did a whole bunch. Game of, of Thrones. Here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think so Discovery, Star Trek Discovery, also did a lot of um, filming here. Alien planets, yeah, I get, I can see that for sure. <laughs> there are entire companies here which do amazing business all year round, just bringing over film companies to to do shooting just all the time. That's awesome. The um, what um, so with uh, you mentioned it on on one of your more recent shows is that uh, getting stuff to Iceland <laughs> is is not is not a, a, a real big plus no, no, <laughs> it no, hasn't no. been it's not hasn't been easy so uh generally it's you know um you're you're waiting or you're you're just having people package things up for you and as large bundles and have them sent them over at once or you know is that generally how it works for you or? i've tried everything honestly yeah. F first of all I, I tried the whole let's just see about ordering and getting it shipped here directly from you know from anywhere whatever i buy Mm -hmm. But I, the example that sticks in my mind the most is the Titans Return Frenzy at uh, Rumble when that okay. came out as a, a single carded tiny figure where once I had paid the customs charge on it, it was actually more than the item had cost me. 
and the uh, customs here is is massively an issue because you just get charged on absolutely everything and you constantly have to declare what you have which is completely normal uh, but then there's a uh, you know, you pay handling charges and they, they had a tax on toys. I think they've reduced that now. It's just like a duty now, but it's just, it's so bad. And the thing is you just unfortunately get used to seeing a price online and convincing yourself that that's the price you're paying and you found a bargain. You forget that once you've paid shipping on top and for example, I bought something from Japan, it was 27,000 yen, which is about I don't know, I guess that comes to $190, maybe something like that. So $180. Then on top of that came another 6,000 yen shipping and precisely the same in customs. So that was 12,000 on top. So another 50% on top of an already $200 item. You soon think, where's the saving? I haven't made a saving and I'm still waiting for it three weeks later because that's just how long stuff takes. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was, so I tried that. And then you try getting people to send you big bundles, like you said, and then you have to sort of, detail everything that's in there i think they believe people are either shipping in drugs and because everyone wants to import stuff all the time because you don't have a lot of uh, options here when it comes to well, amazon don't deliver here you know that's really different you don't get amazon delivery here you've got wow. to get certain bar sellers who will ship to you it's all sorts of um, obstacles like that and yeah the postal service here is notorious for their charges and shipping out of here is massively expensive too I used to sell all the time when I was in the UK. It was a great kind of treadmill of stuff. Like once I was done with it, I would sell it. I could offer great prices. I could offer really good shipping from here. Nobody will buy from me if, if I've add shipping on. So I just tended to bring it over to TF nation. Or when I came to the UK, I would set, I would spend the first two days of my UK vacation at the post office, just sending stuff out to people at better prices. Cause I had to haul it with me in the suitcase. But yeah, it's a massive <laughs> obstacle to collecting here. Wow. Is the getting things. The, um, what about, uh, just finding mainline stuff? Like, are, are there, first of all, are, are there stores that you can yeah. find mainline stuff in and, uh, did, uh, well, Iceland's part of um, the UK, isn't it? So it's part of the European Economic Area. So it's not quite okay. European Union, but it's a European Economic Area. Does um, does Hasbro Pulse count that? I, do they know we're here? I don't know. <laughs> I don't <laughs> think so. No, man. It's just we have a forgotten North Atlantic outpost right floating there just below the arctic circle that's where we are that's, we're known for puffins and eating shark no one's thinking about us it's so hard to get stuff here mm. you just um about mainline stuff in the yeah stores. mainline right so we have we had toys r us here there was a period of time where we had a toys r us here but that went long before it went everywhere else okay um also we don't have mcdonald's here that's the thing we that's bullshit <laughs> <laughs> so, you know what I, I, I say to my kids you, know, you don't need to eat mcdonald's it's um it's trash you know i ate it when i was really really young and it set me on a path of bad eating my whole life and and junk food and now i you know i go back to london and as soon as my wife and the kids are like out i've got like a, a morning to myself i'm down mcdonald's with a slap up 20 nugget meal big mac course, meal massive milkshake of course it's i was brought up this way <laughs> but yeah we don't have that here we do, uh, you do find mainline in supermarkets here or, or toy stores. And I went in just last week and I found legacy blaster, but it was uh, 9,000 Krona, which is something like, it's so much. I think it's like $75, $80, something like that. Holy the prices cow. are typically two to three times what, um, you pay for retail in the U S and maybe even the UK. It's just ridiculous. We have one collector store here called Nexus. Uh, they import they used to import i think from entertainment earth and from us retailers so they could offer better prices and i got a whole bunch of animated from them back in 2008 and universe 2.0 but more recently they they do the current lines and you know their their bottom lines become harder to maintain mm -hmm. so they've had to put a higher markup but no i i don't buy toys locally here typically wow that's a shame it really is because it it cuts you right off at the knees you know and, and <laughs> yeah it's i mean i thought i had it bad with because the postal system here in canada is not great um mm. but and uh and hasbro pulse uh we are um the u.s plus canada uh you know so if you want shipping from hasbro pulse it's just uh 
an exorbitant amount. Like it's usually about 30 bucks tacked on to, uh, to your Hasbro pulse order, which is, it's insane. It's, it's it's insane. So, um, so generally I don't order from Hasbro pulse. It's, it's, it's just too much. Um, if you wanted to ship, you know, I shipped something to, um, to the UK recently and it cost me, um, it was just a box. Uh, I'll show because it was, it's probably about this big. Right. New series Starscream, um, and it was uh, it cost me forty six dollars to ship. Ouch! Yeah, yeah. It, I can relate. It's, yeah. it's you know, and it takes ages from Canada as well. I've always used to wonder why yeah. my toy hacks or repro label orders used to take so long from Canada, but um, it's just the way it is. It's just the way it is. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, generally they'll send uh, post via boat. Right. So <laughs> oh, that explain it. Yeah. So they don't, uh, cause I, I was asked why, it, you know, for that order there, that's, uh, they said, well, we can send it surface and it'll be, uh, $26. And I said, well, surface is boat, uh, or we can, you can spend 46 and it will be, it'll be air. Uh, and I hmm. said, well, how long does air take? And they said probably about three weeks. And I, I said, well, okay, well I, I don't want it to take two months. So, you know, let's, let's go air. Mm-hmm. Right. So, you know, it's, uh, if you're not in the U S the, the postal system is, is going to be garbage. Um, it's just uh, population density. It just, it's, that's how it works. It's, mm-hmm. it's just a system we got to get used to. Um, but uh, the one thing that uh, I do want to get into and, and because you guys have made it work really well uh, first off, you obviously, I, I would think you're getting, you know, uh, a lot of great feedback and I'm, you know, I started, uh, I was part of it at the beginning and I, I kind of, I dropped back because you were getting so much of it and I, you didn't need me, you know, be- beating the drum for no, you. We're all, we all have very fragile egos. We do need you to <laughs> regularly, regularly compliment us. <laughs> but, uh, but you guys started this triple takeover show and uh, it's great. It, it really is great. Oh, so, that. Thank you. Because, you know, a lot of people like, you know, me and, and the other guys from Transmissions, we do a show. It's all news based. There's mm-hmm. the, you know, everyone else has their own, their own show. You guys have done, it's toys. It's just, yeah, you're focused, you're laser focused on toys and I'm the toy guy. I, I, on, for my show, I'm a toy guy. And, uh, you know, you want to talk about comics, well, that's all fine and good. I can talk about all, all aspects of Transformers. That's, that's fine. But, when it comes to toys, I will, I'm in, and hmm. you guys are, 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 are talking my jam right now. And, and I, I love it. I love all the, the niche stuff you're doing, right? Um, you guys got me to buy mask, which I haven't done in a <laughs> long time. Yeah. <laughs> um, we get that a lot <laughs> from people. It's, it's not a, not a week goes by that someone doesn't blame us for a purchase, but you just need to think about what we're doing to ourselves. As I well. can only imagine um and it's it's one of those things that i i want to know you, you i think you guys have mentioned it before but you guys do something that or did something and I, i'm sure it's going to come back because you know the pandemic's kind of it's 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 waning and mm-hmm. uh, which is fantastic i'm i'm loving that it's, everything's coming back to normal the uh but you guys in the uk uh did something that doesn't happen here you guys would get together at, at bars and bring right. out all your figures. That <laughs> shit does not yeah. happen here. Popcorn. This, that, is, yeah. that is crazy. It was Tell crazy. Me about that. Like, how did you guys, first of all, start doing that, which is uh, nuts? And, 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 you know, what would happen? Like, you guys just get drunk with your toys? Yeah. And other people. Wild. And then other drunk people would come and observe and enjoy and, you know, just sort of want to know what's going on. Yeah, this started out uh, because of the UK Transformers discussion thread on TFW 2005. So there was already um, a community of UK and it was almost like their haven on 2005 to not sort of get too much into the other threads where it can get quite toxic or or serious. And the UK thread was just a place where people could just uh, shoot the shit, you know, and just and yeah. say whatever they wanted. And it was very lightly moderated because it didn't really need a lot of heavy moderation very often. And uh, the London-based collectors, uh, I think originally they met up because one person in the group was moving to Singapore. So just a bunch of them said, well, yeah, I mean, since you're moving and you're not really going to be on our time zone anymore, why don't we just meet up at the pub? I didn't get to go to the first one, but a few guys did. They got a taste of it and 
decided to organize another meet where a different group went and I was part of that group. And just the week before that, I'd met one of the UK dealers and one guy called Ironic Hyde in London, just after work, we'd all gone to one pub. And it turns out, you would not believe this, this pub in central London, right in the middle, one of the guys who owned it had a Transformers display up behind the bar. It just, it was right there, G1 Transformers display wow. behind the bar. And this, I think it was called the Crown and Anchor, if anyone knows that, uh, near Drummond Street, if I'm not wrong, near, near Warren Street Station. And it was like, you what? <laughs> this has got to be the pub that we meet at. And so we met up there a few times. Uh, and then it, it was really crowded after work, always really hard to get a table. So then we started migrating to other pubs around the area. We settled in another pub. And yeah, we would go along and people would bring their toys, sometimes rare stuff, mostly new stuff. And myself and Sixo, for example, we would be getting third party toys to review. So we would take them ahead of time. People would get a look at them ahead. And it was just always a complete blast. And we'd get people from other tables going, what are you guys doing? What, what have you got there? Uh, we've had weird couch surfer girls come and sit with us going, like, you guys seem safe. And I was like, H wait, how do we take that? <laughs> okay, you know, we'll take this couple of fun. Most of us are dads anyway, so, you know. Yeah. And yeah. Um, it, it's just been brilliant. And it's the thing I miss the most about um, about not living in the UK. But whenever I do go back to the UK, we do try to organize a meetup. And TF Nation, of course, is just a weekend long version of that. That's that's so great. Um, the guys on on the, our my show transmissions, we've since we started doing the show, getting over to TF Nation has been our our goal, mm -hmm. and it's just it's it's been one of those things that's just been been too too hard to do. Um, but it is one of those things we wanted to, we wanted to really get over there, and uh, and we're hoping to at some point. The um, the only thing that I can think of that is a, a similar that I've ever done in my entire life is um, back when I was in my like late teens, early twenties, I used to play magic, the gathering with mm -hmm. a bunch of, with a bunch of guys on Friday nights uh, at a, at a store downtown. And we would finish when the store would be closed or whatever at 9 PM or something like that. And we'd all just walk down the street to a restaurant and we'd continue playing in this, in this Same restaurant. Same right? vibe. Yep. Exactly. And you'd get these looks from people coming in and stuff like that. But, you know, but that would be it. We'd just be having fun with our, our group of friends and stuff like that. But um, over it, in my brain, going to the pub, which here is different. It was not a, a local neighborhood pub where no, you'd go it's to more the bar. Of a bar culture, isn't it? Yeah, it's a bar culture where you'd go to the bar. You're either on a date, you're going there for dinner or you're going there to meet somebody. Mm -hmm. right hoping to meet somebody which more of a club kind of a deal um but uh it, it's not it's 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 such a such a wild idea to yeah, to yeah. bring all this stuff i i, I you don't I, expect I, someone to walk in with a with a fort max and unbox it in front of everyone exactly no. and and it's it's i'd love to experience that i'd love to be over there for something like that it, it just seems so fun um, uh, andrew griffith came over to one of uh our pub meets because he there was a orbital comics was local and, and i think he was doing a signing there or something after tf nation and uh, yeah he came to one of our pub meets james roberts was one of, one of our pub meets as well uh jeff senior and simon Furman have been in our pub meets it's just they see the atmosphere they see it's just people having a laugh and um just hanging out and talking about anything and it's it's appealing to people, and I think that's why the vibe at TF Nation is so so good as well. Once you mm -hmm. get past the panels and and the dealer room, it's it's all in the hotel lobby in the evening, the mm -hmm. lobby bar, and it's just everyone is there, including the creators and the artists and the the celebrities. I guess those who have time, they'll be there, and you get the artists doing their commissions actually at those tables, surrounded mm -hmm. by fans. That's the that's the fun vibe of it, I think. Yeah, that sounds an awful lot like TFCon. So really, TFCon, TFCon, man. TFCon Toronto, which is coming up in July, it uh, it has a uh, a very similar vibe. Um, the uh, the real fun is is in the lobby. the The hotel they've picked in in Mississauga is uh, is set up where the uh, the hotel rooms are on one end, the dealer room is set up on the other end, and in the middle is this major, massive common area where there's a restaurant, there's a big seating area, and um, and then there's like a little store and blah, 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 a lot of other stuff, but big, big areas to, to sit. And, uh, and everyone in the evening just congregates in this area. Um, there's a, there's a story of Gary Chalk bringing his guitar one time and just, <laughs> just singing songs one evening. Great. Um, there's, you know, 
the guests will come down and sit at the bar and drink with people and, you know, tell, talk, talk and have stories, you know, and that kind of stuff. It's just, it's a great vibe. People will bring their toys down to the bar and, and, and that's, you know, and then they'll just kind of sit there at the table with their friends and kind of look at the new, the new stuff they bought that day. Uh, TF con is, is probably a very similar vibe to TF nation. And, and um, I, I, I very much look forward to, uh, to going and seeing TF nation one of these days and, and vice versa. I'd love to, to, to bring you in and, and have I'd you uh, experience TF con. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It'd be, it'd be a, it. a real hoot. Hmm. So you brought, or, or try to bring the same feel from these pub meetups to, to triple takeover then. Yeah, absolutely. Which is why we always do try to say that the episodes aren't comprehensive. You know, it's not like um, if you listen to the episode on Diaclone, you're you're going to know everything about the line. I mean, that would take hours as well. We already talk enough as it sure. is. Sure. Um, but yeah, it's supposed, uh, so things will be mentioned that maybe are inaccurate and we'll sit there and going, uh, what was the name of that thing? And it'll be like a pub conversation. That's why we leave a lot of the joking around in as well. Yeah. And it, it did really help that the, the year before we did the podcast, we did the great Cybertronian write-off together, the three of us with another UK collector called Ticknat who did all the graphics and layout for those. So we were regularly in touch trying to schedule what we'd write about. We had a chat room where we talked together and that's where that relationship really developed. And if it wasn't for doing that for a bunch of months, I don't think uh, Liam would have had the idea to include us in the podcast. It was Liam's idea originally. Oh, to do wow. The podcast, yeah. Okay. Right. On. So that relationship was there already. Um, we already had plenty of banter and joking around and, and obviously with, with six, he had been attending the pub meets for years as well. He was part of the group that we we go to the pub so I, I knew him quite well been to his house met his wife likewise you know that sort of thing so hopefully that comes through that it's not just uh, people who don't have a prior connection whereas you try not to make it too inside baseball do you know what i mean like it's oh, not yeah. all yeah. in jokes and all the in jokes we have are hopefully just entirely from previous episodes so if you were to listen from the start you'd be in on all the in jokes with the odd smattering of hey we do do some stuff and say some stuff behind the paywall on patreon that you would benefit from getting in on as well mm -hmm. yeah the um there there uh it, you can definitely tell that you guys have a, a very good relationship um and uh and, and it's it, it does come through the 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 earphones right you can you can hear the the jovial nature um you guys take the the piss out of liam quite a lot and i love it oh mate he gives as good as he gets he really does yeah. he's still um, coming out with all the one-liners that end up on the t-shirts he, the he, he does named all of the patreon tiers as you well, guys he's a merch machine man yeah. i love it um you know and uh you know that's that's fantastic i i love that uh you guys have uh like i was saying at the start you guys hit the ground running and uh, and really, you guys were already set up. You you know, with with essentially, you knew what you wanted to do when you you know when you launched this thing. Um, so, and maybe you know, I should save this question for for Liam. But you know, he if it was his idea, did he have all this kind of groundwork that he wanted to do ready? Uh, you know, did he did you guys know that you know, okay, we're going to start a podcast, and but we want to have we're going to have a Patreon. We're going to, you know, we're going to try no. to get our a sponsor because you and Sixo both kind of have this sponsorship deal with, uh, with TF source for your articles. Right. So, you know, you knew that you were going to go to them after, you know, with, with the, uh, the podcast or did that come afterwards? We definitely didn't start it with, uh, with that on the roadmap from the get go. So Liam had the idea to do a podcast. Um, there was a podcast that he was listening to, uh, I think it's retronauts. And okay. uh, he, he wanted to use that as a sort of basis for what we would do. I don't think we ever planned to do as many Transformers episodes as we have, but it's just completely natural because that's where we met. It's what we mostly know. And I'm really glad that we've had the, the mask and the Diaclone now with, with more coming. So he, he came to us and we spent a lot of time in our chat group, just spitballing ideas, coming up with branding, coming up with format. Uh, and then we just recorded a test episode, which was the gimmicks one just to see how it would sound. And I, I do uh, a lot of hosting and uh, public speaking in just the jobs I've done. Uh, so it wasn't too hard for me to, to speak on, on camera and on, on the podcast and six O is doing his YouTube channel as well. So we felt that that was quite a good foundation for us to go forward from, but no, the, the Patreon stuff came later. 
uh, when we saw that there was a response and there was an audience and people liked the stuff because you never really know if you think well okay what does it feel like if someone overhears a pub conversation about toys is it just too niche is it too boring is it too um inaccessible uh so we had to see how that would come across on recorded format and it came across quite well and it wasn't too uk centric either so people from other countries obviously we our biggest audience isn't the uk for example it is uh, the us mm -hmm. um so we needed to see that first and then once we realized that, yeah, we got a lot of downloads, you know, can we convert some of this to pay for, for some of the stuff that we do? Because um, the main thing that makes it difficult is uh, everyone has a day job. Uh, two of us have kids. And by the time we get around to recording, it's the part where the kids are in bed and you're basically spent. You've had a whole day at work, then you kids, and then you sit down and you record. And then comes the editing and Sixo did the editing for a majority of the first year, all just himself. And he does all the graphical work as well. But then we started to share the editing load. So Liam and I had to learn audacity and how to sort of learn how to put an episode together. And that takes a lot of work when it's your turn to do the edit, man, you know it. Uh, so we, we would record on a Monday night and release on a Thursday. So we had Tuesday and Wednesday night to go through what could be up to three and a half hours of recorded material to try and condense it into a, a podcast episode that is fun to listen to. And um, I hope this doesn't sound narcissistic. It's not, but I listen to our episodes on repeat when we recorded them. We did at the start quite a lot, not Liam. <laughs> he doesn't listen to this, but <laughs> six and I would definitely like listen to them over and over again, just when driving, when walking, when doing housework or exercise or whatever, just to see how it sounds. Just mm -hmm. so you can be put yourself in the audience and say, well, that didn't come across very well. Let's do that a bit more tighter. Uh, and that's how we got to the point where we thought, all right, the response is good. Let's see if we can monetize because otherwise this is a hell of a lot of time we're putting into this. I don't think it's sustainable if there isn't something coming in to, to help us create this content. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, you're preaching to the choir here. The, um, th we, uh, we got a lot of help near the beginning, um, from, uh, uh, a good friend, Mike, who became our editor, uh, took on the job of being, uh, uh editing our shows. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, and, uh, I mean, we can't thank him enough because that took an, an exorbitant amount of, of time off of our, our plates. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and he did it incredibly quickly. Although there are days where he can't do it and it falls back on us and I don't know how to edit. I never mm -hmm. learned. So every now and then I get the, uh, you know, I get the, 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 the side eye from, you know, Charles and Jeremy that say, Hey, mm -hmm. uh, maybe you should learn edit, uh, Daryl. And, uh, I, I have yet to learn. Um, so I'm hoping that at some point there will be a, a program, maybe StreamYard can be the one that will, will save me from editing. Um, but, uh, it's, it seems to be a pretty, uh, a pretty straightforward process for the most part now. Oh, it was a painful learning curve though. It, the first couple of occasions were tremendously painful and I, I am a dad with tech. So it, it was just a lot of the time my brain is screaming at me. You can't do this. You're not smart enough for this. You're not built the right way for this. And once you have to sort of overcome that first and one win leads to another win and eventually you get to the place where it's comfortable, but it's still massively time consuming. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad that you guys are making, you know, making some cash to help support it. Well, um, the, uh, um, <laughs> it goes just as quickly. I mean, if you... well, people tend to not realize that podcasting is, yeah, you can sit down and talk to your friends and that's free, but mm. it costs money for a website. Yep. Right. It costs Stats. money analytics all of that stuff it costs money yeah. to do all that and yeah, software. microphones aren't free and you know headphones and this kind of stuff it to make make yourself make yourself sound good it 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 costs money right? yeah and it's so, it's so off-putting when sound car uh, when the podcasts don't have good sound quality you, you just can't get past it and i'm forever ashamed of the first two episodes of the podcast because i didn't have this mic the same as the other two guys do and it was just such a low quality headphone mic or, or a webcam mic I had. And it was just so obvious to me now. I can't listen to those first two episodes without cringing my way through it. 
I, yeah, exactly I'm trying that. to remember the first couple episodes we had. Do you remember those little old microphones that you'd have? They were on a plastic stand and they just kind of like, you know, <laughs> I think those that was what I yeah, used yeah. for the first couple. I mean, that you was a Logitech almost... webcam as well. <laughs> One of those ball Logitech. Well, we didn't have webcams. For... Oh, right. Ours were nine years ago. So we had, uh, you know, we were we've been doing this for a while, but. You know, my first, the first mic I used was very, very old yeah. <laughs> um, and just had the single, the single plug <laughs> into the microphone yeah. jack. But the podcast uh, sphere now, I mean, just think of everything you're competing with. I mean, we're just talking about within Transformers. Nobody has enough time to listen to all the Transformers podcasts. And then there come all the other categories of podcasts that people yeah. listen to. You are so up against it, trying to be recognized and established. Yeah that you have to pull out all the stops you can to really give it a good go and see, well, if we're going to do it, let's do it properly and see where we get to. Mm -hmm. Are you worried that, uh, cause you're talking about, you guys are tackling some, some specific topics, right? You guys aren't going after like episode by episode or the movies after, you know, that kind of stuff. You're, you're, you know, you're going after, like series and then you just did one on a specific character mm. and now you're going like there you could be you could do this forever and, and go after specific characters and go after you know m m higher or lower and lower layers of of mm. you know of this franchise but are you guys worried that you'll get too far into it and that it, the 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 information available won't be worth talking about and that you may just run out of stuff to discuss i thought that when i was writing articles for tf source like mm. 14 years later i was still finding things to write <laughs> about because the scene changes doesn't it sure um, you learn new things new things come along the new shiny is is often worth an article or, or a chat um yes do we worry about running out of topics uh, I suppose so, yeah, especially when you have marquee topics like 1984 G1 as one topic. Sure, yeah. But those those episodes are really hard to do because you are under pressure to include as much as you can to make it definitive when we set out to not make definitive episodes. So we've tried to sort of split it up. For 1986, we did movie toys, and one day we'll do a non-movie toy version. We'll do the 1986 movie one day, but we're not putting out all the really massive headline topics in one go so we're trying to stretch those out i mean look how long it took us to get to rid and car robots and we've been talking about that since like week four. Oh yeah and finally we did the one year topic on it and it felt great to celebrate it that way so as long as we have those milestones to look forward to we can always um have something to talk about that's the beauty of the hobby or well, we always do these mini shows on patreon thinking 20 minutes we're going to spend 20 minutes talking about cassette combiners i mean how much is there to say about cassette combiners 45 minutes in and we're still on the first set and you think come on you know <laughs> gotta wake up in five hours time <laughs> guys can we wrap this up <laughs> so from that experience i would say it will be quite some time before we run out of topics yeah no i i and and definitely i think you guys can definitely uh uh mine mine this well for for quite some time the um uh, we always joke about it on our show is that our our wives ask us how you guys find something to talk about week in and week out. Right. And we're like, it's just, there's something, there's always something new. Right. So the, you know, and um, you know, and when we're all pretty good at being chatterheads as well, so we can, we can, we can yammer on about a, you know, a, a, a new image of a selects release. Right. Right. Yeah. So yeah. It's also, a, people it, love to hear about stuff they don't know about or have an opinion on. We we really thought that some of our episodes would fall flat because it's mm. not what our main audience listen to. But Mask and Diaclone have been two of our most popular episodes by far because people want to learn about different talk. And that's why you listen to other podcasts, isn't it? You don't yeah. just listen to them to have your own opinion spoken back to you or to hear about all the things you already know about and have an established feeling on you um you want to hear about stuff you don't know to keep you engaged so that's really worked well too yeah no of course and it's a, a huge nostalgia kick too right it's because oh yeah. i remember that mask right yeah. mask was one of some of my toys so uh, yeah let's give her a listen and see oh oh yeah i had the thunderbird okay i had i had the meteor right and in yeah, that kind of stuff right so that feeling yeah. there that good feeling um that unironic earnest feeling of the 80s and childhood 
which was probably at the heart of the synthwave scene when it first started before it became ironic, is what we have leaned on uh, for our tone. It was the same for the great Cybertronian write-off. It's the same for our pub meets, and that's what makes them work because we're all unashamed, massive fans. And it, it is a lot about feeling and not just facts and, you know, the kind of cold, hard truths about hobby collecting and that kind of stuff. It's just about talking about stuff we really love and someone being and finding that infectious when they're nearby and then latching onto that, which is why we have found um, we get a lot of messages where people say in a, in a hobby, which can be quite toxic and inaccessible with a degree of gatekeeping as well in certain areas, it's nice to listen to something which is just people gushing about fun things and mm -hmm. being happy and grateful for the things that they like yeah and just being earnest about it really yeah it's it's yeah it's about people enjoying what they enjoy right you yeah yeah it's you can like what you like and and i remember i had to i had to maybe take some of my words back because i when the images first came out of this thing it was i remember it was uh week one we got the images of the uh um nicey is her name but i can't remember the name of the company who made it the the rc mm -hmm. the the large breasted rc that came out third party company it wasn't based it wasn't like a um, like wei jang were doing like some kind of upscaled more complex version of an existing mold was it a totally no nope, it was a, it was an original mold um and i, I can't remember the name of the company but anyway well, there have been many there was a lot of them oh yeah in a so, short period of time and then um but then the the the, the next week it, the add-on kit for or for for fans toys rouge came out um, oh goodness yes and that. with the with the the squishy boobs right <laughs> and i i just i was like this True. is crazy yeah. i can't right and i just i typed up a twitter thread and i was like you know what this is enough enough right and you can't be doing this to rc and i had to walk that back because i said this is something that people want to do it's not my thing be all do what you want to do right just if you want to buy it buy it this is not for me and that's the thing i just had it's a toy if you want to have you know your big boobed rc or you want to have your squishy boobed rc that's your it's your deal right and let people like what they like that's basically what i had to walk it i had to walk my comments back and uh you know and i i, I feel better about that now because it's you know sure that's an extreme example mm -hmm. but it it all applies to the same thing right whether you whether you 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 only like I don't know, hot rod and you want a whole cabinet full of hot rods, which is insane. Right. But, <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's, uh, it's, it's one of those things that you, you like what you like and you don't have to apologize for it. Right. It's what I like. Right. And, and yeah, so it's, uh, it's an interesting, um, it's an interesting hobby to be a part of and, you know, and I'm really glad that you guys have decided to to do this show. You guys all have a very um, interesting connection with being photographers. Mm -hmm, that's um, true. Yeah, and uh, and you guys bring a very artistic eye to uh, to the fandom. You guys have all been known over the years for being photographers, but uh, now Not so you're long for me. To be honest, I think um, most of my time in the fandom. It, it, if there is such a thing as as being known or at least having people say i appreciate that you did this it was the writing more for me i only did the photography because i needed that's, something yeah, to break up all true. the text yeah yeah <laughs> you had um you were doing the collector interviews for much longer weren't you yeah i've i've been writing yeah. for tf source since yeah Oh, well, it must have been 2004. So it's over a decade and a half. I had a relationship with it. You mentioned that relationship earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, I knew the owner and the founder. Sure. We were both mates. He was a collector, a toy collector. He's still a toy collector. And uh, I, I know, so, yeah. I remember when he set up the company and he he liked my articles and I agreed to write for him uh, exclusively. And cool. that was great fun. And I did that for years and then I stopped and then I started again. And then when I decided, when I moved here, I realized that it was not as realistic for me to write so regularly and i wanted a break is when yeah. uh, 60 took over 
So yeah, we okay. both had a good relationship with TF Source, which is why they, they made so much sense to go to. Because also, when you do a podcast, you can talk about, as you've just mentioned, a range of topics, and sometimes it goes to controversial places. Yeah. And never did they ever interfere with anything I wrote in 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 years, and the same for 6.0. So we just thought they are obviously, they have faith in their content creators. They have faith that we know what we're saying and we know what we're doing and they don't try to, they've never pinned an agenda on what we produce. So what better uh, people to have represent the show uh, and sponsor the show. And they were first on the list. Mm -hmm. Well, they're a great, they're a great sponsor. And uh, I'm, I've never met him personally. I think I rode in an elevator with him uh, because he was <laughs> he was at TFCon, and I was like, yeah. I should introduce myself. And I'm like, Nah, I'm not going to bother. I mean, he's busy. He's, a, he's a great lad. He will yeah. happily um, have a chat with you about toys. But uh, yeah, he's guy. he's there. The TFCon weekends are insane, and mm. uh, anytime I'm sure these guys get to spend some, you know on their own, I I uh, I, I, yeah, I let yeah. them have it. Yeah, so, they, um, they were all like show, show, show break for the evening. Yeah, yeah the, it yeah. was always like that with him at um, Botcon as well when i used to see him at botcon and then he came and did tf nation one year as well so oh wow cool the um but uh but maybe i'll i'll, I'll introduce myself if he's at uh, tfcon this year um the uh but it's a it's a great relationship i uh, mm-hmm. i've shopped at uh, tf source myself uh, over the years and uh and uh the pandemic forced me to 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 not because the borders were closed and i couldn't right. get over to the states to, to pick up my stuff but uh um but the uh uh, I'm I'm looking forward to to, to shopping with them again. <laughs> Making up for lost time. Right? <laughs> yeah, the um there's a there's a store in Canada that uh, that's over in the the west coast that uh, uh, ages three and up that uh, was able oh, yeah. to fulfill my needs pr- fairly well. Um and uh, and and God, yeah, been around a long time. I remember when that was set up too, and the dude who set it <laughs> up. But yeah, I think he sold it eventually to another group, but I remember the dude who set it up. It's uh they're a great group of guys because they'll show up at TFCon as well and. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's been really good. I was able to get uh, it's on this side. There he is. Uh, there, there he is. Uh, I'm loving the display behind you, by the way. Everyone. Oh, thanks. Yeah, the uh, the Radiotron. The uh, the I've seen a I've bunch got... of Canadian Insecticons there as well. Is it? Have you got a couple of Hasbro Canada Insecticons? The uh, is that uh, there? Yeah, right there. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I do. Yeah, yeah. They. Uh, you're more Canadian uh... as well. It is. I can't. That's in, that's impressive that you can t- you can see that. That's this is what they take the piss out of me for on the show. Exactly, I, this kind of cardboard. The fact that you can see that from there. Yeah, that's that's incredible. That's, ah, uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So both of those, I, I, I most of those boxes are are uh, are Canadian boxes. Yeah. Perfect. They yeah. they haven't counterfeited those yet. It's the way to go if you want to make sure. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I've told and people. It's so cool as well. Every yeah. single Canadian G one box has something uh, wacky on it, which is worth researching i just got I, those canadian cassettes recently with the robot points on the yeah. front i was like what <laughs> that's so good i love uh i love taking pictures of the uh of the french names yeah because they they yeah, they right. have they don't mean anything as far as the oh. uh as far as the uh the english name like right. uh like blaster's french name is tempo tempo like, star screams is great ego that, ego oh wicked, it's, yeah. oh it's so good it's so solo good. for sunstreaker also good <laughs> Oh, I love these things. They're they're great. The uh, my um, I have uh, a jazz, a prowl, and Saxo. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I always thought Saxo. We should get that one. <laughs> yeah, that's a it's a Canadian box as well. They're all Canadian. I had the box. prowl servo. I used to have yep. that one, and of course, well. the Springer is called Ricochet, which is a good laugh. Ah, oh, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. So most of those are all Canadian G one boxes. Yeah. So brilliant. Yeah. Um, yeah. Respect. The, uh, Thanks. I uh, I had an op- opportunity to buy a uh, a Canadian Pepsi Prime. Lovely. Uh, and I, I took pictures of it. It was because uh, I volunteer at a uh, at a comic book store. Hmm. Volunteer. Uh, nice. You know, they give me a discount on toys, which is uh, yeah. is how I got. We'll take it. That. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll take that. Yeah. So we're, uh, I t- <laughs> we're here to be taken advantage of. <laughs> yeah. um, so I took pictures of all of the. Uh, this is how you take pictures. You take. <laughs> That's how I take yeah. them. Um, but uh, you take a picture. reflector along with you, just to, <laughs> yeah, to, to click on both sides. Mm. Um, yeah. Uh, so I took pictures of the Pepsi Prime, and I'm like, oh, this thing is gorgeous. And uh, yeah, the big sticker on the truck, on mm. the trailer, right, and everything, and it looked great. The trailer door at the back as well. Yeah, it was there. in the box, and it had all the paperwork and everything. I'm like, yeah. And I said, what do you, what are you asking for this thing? And the guys, uh, the guy said, oh, we're gonna put 800 bucks on it. And I said. Mm. 
I said, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'm going to take it. And, oh, uh, really? and, uh, and I said, <laughs> and, uh, um, and well, I would get discount on it too. Right. So, Fantastic. so I said, just, uh, you know, hold it and I'll, I'll, you know, I'll be back and we can use some of my, uh, you know, uh, my, uh, my volunteer money to, mm-hmm. uh, to, to put towards it and I'll give you some other stuff. And, uh, a guy came in. He said, "I, I said before, while I came in, uh, a guy came in and uh, it paid him full cash oh, money for it." And I said, "I can't. I got to take full cash." And I said, "I, I get it. Um, I've lost another figure like the same way too. Another. He had a, uh, he had a, uh, a an eighty six movie Megatron mm. s- still in its uh, shipping box. Very nice with um, a certificate. With a certificate yeah, and." Okay. Uh, and it, it, he was only selling it for 500 bucks. And, uh, today that's what you'd pay for a boxed Megatron anyway, any, any yeah. style. Yeah. And, uh, and another guy came in and he said, uh, that he paid, yeah. he, he took it for cash. And I said, ah. I said, I get it. You're here to make money. And I'm just, uh, I'm just disappointed. <laughs> so, just goes to show you should never walk away from one of these things. No. And actually I had it, I had that one. I had it in my little hold area where I do all their transformer stuff. And he, uh, he came down and got it. <laughs> he took it from me. So, These opportunities will vastly reduce as time goes on. I'm afraid. Yeah, they will. But, uh, but it's one of those things like, uh, yeah, I, uh, I, I just, I, I like cr- collecting the G ones. I, uh, I don't sell as much as them as, uh, as you do. Um, I, I like to keep I try them. not to, <laughs> you know, that's just the way it goes. Yeah. I'm trying to complete the G one, uh, line. So it's, uh, I'm over the 300 mark now with that's the G one characters. I've made peace with the fact that I'm never going to do that in my lifetime. And, and it's quite liberating when you know, you're never going to own every micro master and every pretender because it just narrows your focus a little bit. And mm-hmm. I mean, we're, I'm past my 40th birthday now, you know, yeah. I, and I've probably been in the hobby longer than I will be going forward. I think, can you imagine us doing this when we're 70? Oh my it's God. Hard to, it's hard to imagine, right? But uh, <laughs> you think to yourself, I've got less years left in the hobby than I've already had. And I still haven't bought those certain things. And there's new stuff coming out that is more exciting. And I'm going back and looking at things like I've bought two Unicron trilogy toys this week. Like I'd never thought I'd do that. And yet I've still never owned a complete Menasaur, uh, you know, stuff like that. So really, um, yeah, I, I haven't. Yeah. Oh, I, wow. I went straight from, oh, I want these cause I never had them as a kid to, Ooh, Diaclone, you know, really early. So it just put me on a completely different track as a early collector. But yeah, I don't think I'll ever complete you on you, And you say you're near then. I'm near, I'm near. Uh, I think I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm very close. Most of the stuff I'm looking to get now are all the very expensive stuff. Um, but the, uh, but I think about what you, you just mentioned, uh, I think about that quite a bit, um, where I'm now 42 years old. Same. And, and, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> and, uh, I, I think, do I want to be sitting here in a room full of toys when I'm 50, when I'm 60, right? You know, well, I mean, the answer is yes, but it's like, well, yeah, should I be sitting course. in a room full of toys? When I'm 60? <laughs> you know, so it's it's one of those things like can what do you where am i still going to tf con at 60 right you know What's that it's going to look like <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to look good right it's not going to look good so there'll be a um, nap time just like yeah. in the middle of the panels this is a nap time now yeah right? <laughs> <laughs> that's so true you get people just going back to their hotel rooms taking a snooze and before they yeah. come down for the evening but uh, it's it's just you know so yeah i look around and i'm like okay like i had to i had to cut out almost all mainline yeah right because it's just it's too expensive and frankly i don't like the quality that things are being built mm-hmm. at anymore the prices right. are insane it's 30 oh, dollars yeah. for a deluxe now here in canada yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. right, right. That uh, legacy bulkhead really made me stop and think, what am I doing here? Yeah. And the poxy thing broke as well. So I was like, come on, you know, 30 pounds that cost me. I yeah. guess that's like $40 it, it, uh, converted. I yeah. Just like, I hate that thing now yeah. <laughs> because it broke as well. Yeah. I was like, come on. It's too much. It's too much. Yeah. Yeah. I look back and I'm still in love with, because one of my favorite figures, and I love to use it as an example, is Sergeant Cup. Generations Sergeant Cup with the eye gear head. You right, gotta, you, to go. Yeah, you gotta get the eye gear head on there because if you once you change the head, it becomes a brilliant figure. 
Mm-hmm. And it's solid. It weighs a ton. And yeah. the thing only cost 17 bucks. Yeah. It's the right, same with get. the 06 Classics too, right? Like yeah. Classic Prime. If you haven't handled that toy in about a decade and you've just been buying new stuff like Robots in Disguise or Legacy or War for Cybertron, and then you go and get a Classics Prime, you think, mm-hmm. what? <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. I've got two of them. Yeah. <laughs> I've got the one you guys talked about on the show. It came in a two pack with, um, with a G, oh, no, not a G1, um, with an uh, evasion, part. with a major evasion mode. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's the one yeah. with the chrome leg, chrome thighs. Yeah, isn't that's it? right. Yeah. So I have, I have that one as well. Um, and that's a great toy. But they great. actually, it, they changed the, the one that they came in the two pack, they changed it. It's uh, the plastics, the newer plastic, it's lighter. So it, right. it's the original classic one is not as, the, the original classic one is, is actually way better than this newer Dense. one. Yeah. Yeah. You can feel it. You can really feel it. They've, they've changed their, their, their manufacturing process. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, uh, I don't know, man. Uh, Maz, I don't want to keep you much longer. Uh, we've I'm been available. going at this. I'm having a great time. So, <laughs> but, uh, it's, it's, this is, this is fantastic. I want to, I want to talk to you, uh, much more. Um, uh, we can, uh, like, yeah, I, we could, we should do this again. I think so we, we should just do this again. I think we'll, we'll fun. Absolutely yeah, I, uh, I, I've, I've wanted to chat with you a long time and I'm really happy we were able to do this. It's um, been a pleasure. Absolutely. Because, uh, uh, yeah, you, you just, you guys seem awesome. And, uh, any, every interaction I've had with you online has been a pleasure. And, uh, Likewise, I just, Likewise. I, I want to get, uh, I want to get to meet you in person um hopefully at tf nation, nation or yeah you've got to make the time i got i got to get over there my wife wants to go over she was she was watching the jubilee this morning she's like she's a big royal watcher so she's she was checking all that crap out and and uh and i'm like well if you go over you can we can go in and you can look at all the castles and you know and what's on the way iceland yeah yeah way. yeah it's I'll... the stopover capital of the atlantic <laughs> so why not if she wants to go and see the royals i'll jump out of the plane at, at iceland there you go. And I'll get you into the Blue Lagoon. <laughs> Fantastic. So yeah, it's a, it's a definitely a place to visit and you should 100% make your way to TF Nation. It's, mm-hmm. it's a brilliant show. I really want to. They uh, they do a lot of more uh, comic book stuff and mm. and um, I'm not the biggest comic guy, but uh, I do have uh, some, there are some artists and some creators that make it over there and, and really don't make the, the leap yeah. over to North America here. There is nothing better than leaving a show with a piece of Nick Roach commissioned artwork. I can tell you it's the best way to finish a TF Nation. It's the highlight of the year. I've got, I don't know if you can see, that's his handiwork, just sketches of Diaclone head sculpts and he's just the greatest that's amazing i've got i've got some sketch covers that he's done um but uh, i also have um i also have some original pages from alex milne yeah you see them recently when he posted them online i missed every single one i was really oh man see because he's brought them to gfcon oh he has yeah Yeah. so he just has the books there and you know you just go flip through them so Issue four and five, more than meets the eye. I would have loved to grab anything from those, but they were all gone immediately. Give I have the second. cover to issue two, though. You believe that? Really? Yeah. And the thing is, he did. It's the one with Rodimus on the cover, and yeah. uh, when he drew it originally, he drew it with the old uh, Rodimus model from IDW, the one that you see in um, the Mike Costa run. Yeah. So he did a whole cover with the wrong Rodimus art. <laughs> and then he had to redo the cover with Nick Roach's Rodimus design. Oh, that's and right. I've yes. got both of them. I've got the the wrong one and the right one. Oh wow! So this is something I haven't found a place in my house to put it yet. But uh, this is from issue seven. So. Oh my goodness! That's this the is Scavengers the episode, isn't it? Oh, this wow. is this is the uh, DJ Black uh, Yeah. This is the first page that uh, that Tarn appears on. Ooh, very nice. So, My mate owns the cover to that issue, the Nick Roach cover. Really? Oh, yes. it's an Alex Milne cover. That's the issue seven. That's incredible. So that's the um, yeah. So that's the page. I, I had it blown up and and put right alongside the real the real page. Yeah. Um, 
Alex the tarn, did the, the tarn cover with the, the tarn, tarn mask. Cover, yeah. Right? Oh, so the, you're looking at the other one. Yeah. Yeah. Nick did the cover where they're holding the heart, like a uh, misfire's holding the, the heart in his hands. Right. Yes. So yeah. My mate James yeah. has that cover. That is right an amazing on. piece you've got there. Absolutely brilliant. Lovely framing on it, too. Well, it's, it's, I just had it getting, got it on there. I have another one with, uh, it's, and it's hung up uh, in the house here somewhere of, um, the page where uh, tailgate is grabbing Rodimus from behind his uh, on his back, um, and they're they're jumping down towards the uh, the ship. I guess um, it's I can't remember what issue that's from. But it was like fifty kind of. Yeah, it's way before. Right? It's way before that. Uh, tailgate uh, yeah. had his legs were all read. blown up. Yeah, and uh, yeah. So anyway, it's a it's a great piece, and it uh, it's framed exactly the same with the uh, with the actual page blown up. Oh it. right. That must be um, when they find Luna One, right? Yeah, the, like uh, they're going. What's the name of Rodimus's ship? I can't remember. Um, the Rod, Pod, the Rod, Rod Pod. Okay. Yeah, they're jumping. Man, obviously, back. I need to reread because I've, I've, I, I've, it's, it's like, I've I haven't read it in so long, but I look at this page every every day because it's uh, it's in a it's in a common area of the house. But it's I love getting the original art, and I get these sketch covers done when I go to the um, mm. when I go to them, and uh, and I actually love getting them to do non-transformers stuff yeah so i've gotten uh i got alex to draw like wolverine or you know um they nick love that is, stuff too i bet oh they love it and, and nick has drawn a spider-man cover for me oh, that's uh, amazing it looks good they look great alex is yeah. so funny he, i asked him to do a great short for me once and he had no qualms in telling me when he handed it to me that he hated doing it I went, okay <laughs> Here's, mate, here, here's your money <laughs> so, he's so funny like that and you know he's you remember, honest yeah you remember more than meets the i-45 with the photograph of the scavengers that i took yes of course yeah so when i met him uh, he said to me i was really annoyed that james got you to do a photograph i was like i would have drawn that I was like, why are you telling me of all the people to tell why are you telling me <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's, he's he's a he's a character he's he'll he he tells you he tells you how it how he likes it and uh yeah but uh, yeah, he's uh, he's a very talented artist, and uh, I hope he's doing. Well. He's uh, he's got some health issues going on right now, yeah, so I, I hope he makes it to yeah to TF uh, TFCon. But uh, I, I'm perfectly um, understanding if he can't make it. Um, anyway, I'm gonna let you go. But uh, dude, this was a pleasure, an absolute was awesome. thrill. Thank you very much. Lovely way to spend uh, I, the Friday. Mm -hmm. I, I I look forward to uh, all episodes of Triple Takeover. Fantastic. And, uh, and, and they're, they're, they're fantastic. Um, you got to tell Liam to, to reply to his fricking DMS, uh, <laughs> but reply to mine first. Well, but, oh, <laughs> next time I see him, we'll be on camera. Just show up like a rock star. What are we doing lads? Be, <laughs> that's the next time I'll see him. Um, but, uh, yeah. So, and then, uh, there, the invitations open for six. So when, uh, when he decides, uh, he, yeah. uh, he's ready, but, I'm uh, sure yeah, we'll take you up on that. The, um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's been an absolute thrill. Uh, do you want to, do you want to leave us with, uh, letting uh, people know how they can uh, find you? Yeah. If, uh, if you want to follow us on social, you can find us at, at triple underscore takeover on Twitter and Instagram. We're also on Facebook at triple takeover. And we've got, you know, individually, we probably do more posting about triple take triple takeover than the actual official account. I'm at TF square one everywhere. We've got at toy box soapbox for Liam and at six TF is six O. Uh, you can find us at www.tripletakeover.com and you can listen on the web. Uh, I know a bunch of people were unhappy when we decided no longer to pursue YouTube, uh, but you can listen on Spotify, you can listen on tripletakeover.com, or you can find us on all of the big podcasts like Google, Apple, Spotify, Overcast. We're on, we're on all of those. And uh, if you want more, because you've listened to all the episodes, we're also on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash triple takeover, where we have bi-weekly minisodes and soon we're going to have even more content on there we've already like done 23 minisodes so that's hours and hours of content there for those of you who are flying loads doing loads of chores lots of exercises any people got sitting at home doing artwork or lego and they like to listen but yeah that's where you can find us everywhere basically that's amazing right on all right well once again thanks a lot maz for joining me and uh, my pleasure thanks for inviting me it's been brilliant yeah, for sure and uh we will uh we will be talking to you uh as soon all right i look forward to it and send me a picture of that bugatti i'm going to 
I'm gonna yeah, go in uh, and gonna go dig it out and 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 take a picture for you. All right, and uh, and we will talk to you soon. Take care, mate. Have a great weekend. Bye. 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 Thank you for listening to this episode of Transmissions. If you'd like to join the conversation, travel to our Discord channel at transmissionspodcast.com slash Discord. Want some cool transmission swag? Feast your eyes on our transmissions gear at transmissionspodcast.com slash shop. If you'd like to support our podcast, go to transmissionspodcast.com slash support or tell your friends about our show. We'll see you next time.